Hi, welcome and welcome back. I hope you're doing well. I wanted to encourage you, if you haven't already, to, if you'd like, click the links in the description box and to get your complimentary copy of the How to Identify a Narcissist checklist that I've put together and the recommended reading list that I've put together for you. I spent some time and thought putting these resources together for you to help you on your healing journey. At a later time, I'll get into some of the reasons why I approached these two uh, items the way that I did, but I wanted to encourage you in the meantime to grab a copy uh, by clicking the links below. I want to talk to you about shame and narcissists are expecting you to roll in the shame lane. There's healthy, healthy guilt, and then there's toxic shame. Healthy guilt is okay. It's what I equate that to is my bad, is another way of looking at healthy guilt. Like, you know, you do something, you say something, you maybe forget to do something or omit something and it's like okay my bad my bad on the other hand toxic shame is i'm bad i'm so bad that i'm just bad beyond repair beyond hope beyond redemption and it's that toxic shame that you want to avoid. You definitely want to take responsibility for whatever you need to take responsibility for. We've all done things that we feel guilty about and that's healthy and that's normal. And it's good to feel that guilt because that's what helps us to course correct and do better next time. Like Maya Angelou says, when you know better, you do better. It's the toxic shame that keeps you stuck in this vortex of just the downward spiral and hopelessness and perceived helplessness and despair and depression, discouragement. And you don't wanna be there. You wanna own what you need to own, deal with what you need to deal with, work through what you need to work through and move forward so that you can live your life, enjoy your life, enjoy your relationships with other people, cultivate new healthy relationships, right? Lord knows I have done things that I feel guilty for. For example, I shared in my video about murder and manipulation. I feel guilty for exposing my family and myself to the alleged murderer. I did not do my due diligence before engaging with him in a professional context. I didn't. And that was my bad. I mentioned before that a local TV producer did her due diligence, but she did it after the murders and found out that this guy had felonies and all kinds of stuff on his record. And when the articles came out, when his uh, older children came forward and talked about the abuse that they had endured, the picture started coming into focus. And I felt really badly, like, wow, wow. I, I exposed my family to this person and myself. That's my bad, not doing my due diligence. That's my bad, not asking enough questions or really digging enough. Now, that being said, healthy guilt is one thing, but then there's toxic shame. And I've experienced some of that myself. It could be something like feeling just the toxic shame of, 
of being from a narcissistic family. Like, wow, like what a mess. And this is where I come from. And well, how's my life gonna unfold? Or I'm always gonna let toxic people into my life and I'm just never gonna be able to filter this out. And because I came from this toxic family and I have narcissists in my family and oh, and oh. If you've been in a relationship with a narcissistic or toxic individual, sometimes the toxic shame can just even stem from the, the embarrassment or just the, the regret or, you know, anguish or discouragement or, or even guilt of allowing yourself to be lured into the relationship through the love bombing, through the lies, through the manipulation, through the false self. And sometimes that can be a way that you can carry the burden of toxic shame. And in some ways, the narcissist kind of relies on you staying stuck in toxic shame because that's one of the ways that they can maybe count on you to be quiet and to stay silent about the abuse that you've endured from them. After all, narcissists love to heap on the abuse and to project all of their inner pain, their shame and turmoil onto you, but they don't want you to talk about it. They don't want you to tell anybody. They want you to keep it a secret. Because they don't want that thrown back in their face. They don't want to have to deal with that. They know what they've done. They know who they are. And that's another thing. If the narcissist in your life maybe tricked you into thinking that they were something better than who they really are, somebody more prominent, somebody of better character or of greater knowledge than they actually are or status, only to find out that it's quite the opposite. Even the embarrassment or the just the, the shame, the toxic shame from that revelation can keep you stuck in toxic shame and carrying a burden that is really not yours to bear. Someone lied to you, someone conned you, someone scammed you, someone manipulated you, tricked you. Those are their actions. Those are, those are their choices. That's their behavior. Didn't ask enough questions, didn't do your due diligence. Okay, you're bad. But the conning, manipulating, tricking, deception, projection, love bombing, all this other stuff, that's them. You're bad doesn't mean that you're bad. And here's the thing that you need to remember. Where shame is alive, narcissists thrive. Narcissists will capitalize off of your feelings of toxic shame. And the bottom line is, if it wasn't your bad, then it's not your burden. You may have endured abuse as a child. You may have been beaten as a child. You may have been sexually abused as a child. You may have been psychologically abused, verbally abused, abandoned, neglected, and more. That is not your burden to bear. Whoever did that, that's their burden to bear. You have to Focus on your life now and what you can do now 
and living your life now and not carry the burden of toxic shame that really belongs to someone else. Symptoms of toxic shame can include addictions, compulsive behavior, deeply rooted insecurity, competitiveness, jealousy, envy, negative feelings, focusing on external things, being hypercritical of yourself and others, not being able to accept criticism, not accepting responsibility, sabotaging relationships and pushing away intimacy, being extremely self-focused, feeling a sense of being kind of an outsider or an outlier, and also keeping things very shallow or surfacey in relationships. Those are some of the symptoms that are actually listed in one of the books that I recommended to you, Mending the Soul. When you can recognize and acknowledge and work on and heal from and overcome these symptoms associated with shame and whatever the situations were where the shame was initiated, then you can go on about the business of healing and getting better and cultivating healthy relationships. Narcissists often feel a lot of shame, a lot of deeply rooted shame. And I've mentioned before, and again, not to be apologetic or make excuses, but the narcissist in your life has likely experienced a lot of trauma, abuse, neglect, uh, things like that, that they feel deeply ashamed of. They may not have the support or the resources to be able to overcome the shame that they feel about whatever it was that they experienced. And so they spend time just spinning and spiraling and swirling in shame. And where shame is alive, narcissists or narcissism can thrive. So you can start to see where the trauma, the point of shame, the point of neglect or abuse, whatever the case may be, how that gives birth to a lot of toxic behavior. And more than likely, the narcissist in your life is carrying the burden of shame for something that happened possibly a long time ago that was not their fault. But they're carrying that forward. They, they've not dealt with it and they've carried that forward into adulthood and have remained stuck and steeped in toxic shame. And if you are in or have been in a relationship with a narcissistic or toxic individual, they've more than likely projected that shame onto you within the context of the relationship until either they discard you or you go no contact or get away from them and cut them off. Narcissists are often steeped in toxic shame and expect you to roll in the shame lane. After all, misery loves company and they'll want you to come along for the ride. Do you ever struggle with feelings of guilt or toxic shame? Comment below, share your thoughts, share your story. I'd love to hear. Say no to toxic shame and stay in your lane. Know who you're dealing with, know who you are. Take care and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.